Hello, I am Estefania Torrejón and will present my work on the form of a poster with the title Impact of Oral Anti-Diabetic Drugs on Gut Drive Extracellular Vesicles Proteomic Signature. Uh, if uh, you have any questions that are not addressed during this presentation, you can contact the corresponding authors or send me a DM on Twitter. We will start with some background. Metabolic homeostasis results from the interaction among all organs and the gut plays a special role within this interaction because it is the largest endocrine organ. Its permeability allows the passage of cells uh, or other bodies and the gut uh, liver axis that allows direct communication with the liver. One of the ways the gut uses to communicate with other organs are through extracellular vesicles, also known as EVs. But uh, what are these EVs? EVs can be formed within the lumen of a multivesicular body, uh, but there are also e large EVs that generate, generate directly within the plasma membrane. The multivesicular body can also fuse uh, with the plasma membrane and then release the small EVs. If we take one of these EVs to see on its contents, we will find uh, lipids, proteins and nuclei acids that will afterwards be received by the other cell, enhancing intracellular communication. And the fate of these EVs in the recipient cells includes membrane fusion, ligand binding or endocytosis mechanisms. We previously unveiled that gut-derived EVs, isolated from a high-fat diet model when administered to a healthy animal, drive a diabetogenic phenotype, resulting in weight gain, glucose intolerance and hepatolipid accumulation. And many gut-derived EVs proteins are related to lipid metabolism. So, we hypothesize that, in part, metformin and pioglitazone metabolic actions are dependent on gut-derived EVs proteomic cargo. To unveil the relevance of oral antidiabetic drugs on EVs cargo, we aim at, uh, first, the characterization of both treatment groups uh, with metformin or with pioglitazone and gut-derived EVs proteomic cargo and then uh, apply a differential expression analysis among all groups and an enrichment analysis on top regulated proteins. Now our methods. Mice were divided in four groups. One of the groups uh, corresponding to the control group were fed normal shell diet uh, for a period of 12 weeks. And then the other three groups were fed high-fat diet for during the same period. Then uh, one of the high-fat diet groups were, were treated with vehicle control uh, and another group with the drug metformin and then the last one with the drug pioglitazone. After the sacrifice, the gut was collected and the EVs were isolated. Uh, after LCMS analysis, the proteomics analysis was performed and also liver tissue samples were uh, kept and analyzed. And now we go to the results. After six weeks of treatment, control mice presented lower body weight compared to all other groups. And mice treated with metformin had a reduced body weight compared to those treated with bioglitazone. Both drugs improve uh, glucose intolerance in comparison with the high-fat diet. A principal component analysis was then performed on the output of the proteomics dataset, and the results suggested that the treated groups had a similar signature as of uh, the control or normal chow diet group. And on, on the contrary, they were very uh, different from the high-fat diet group. Volcano plots of both the high fat diet group versus the metformin treated group and high fat diet group versus the bioglitazone treated group allows a visualization of top regulated proteins. And some of these proteins are shared among both groups, the metformin or bioglitazone, and this comprises down very similarities on down regulated proteins and then up regulated proteins. 
the Venn diagram here below uh, shows 50 proteins that are shared among upregulated bioglitazone and upregulated metformin proteins. On this heat map, we can see a column comprising three samples corresponding to each group. Seeing first the results from the liver histology, both metformin and bioglitazone improve liver stosis compared to pre-diabetic animals. The heat map uh, shows proteins associated to lipid transporter activity here, and these were shared among normal child diet group, our control, and metformin and pioglitazone treated groups. On the contrary, proteins related to acid transferase activity, which plays a fundamental role in the decision of whether fatty acids are stored, were upregulated on the high fat diet group. And finally, our conclusions. We unveiled that treatment with metformin or pioglitazone resulted in a protein signature that resembles normal shell diet, that is the healthy signature, and that top regulated proteins for uh, a high fat diet and pioglitazone or and high fat diet or metformin are related to lipid metabolism. If we access the link uh, encoded on the QR code, we can have access to the common molecular functions among these three groups. And finally, the take-home message would be that both these drugs can modify the protein content of gut-derived EVs and ultimately play a role on interorgan cross-tag for metabolic homeostasis. Thank you very much for your attention.